Ride it. Giddy up, horsey, giddy up, giddy up, yee -haw. Look at how fast he's shifting. Shifting into overdrive. Oh, sick drift, bro. Like out of breath from riding this fine steed, but look at that steed. We have the engine pretty much ready to go in the car. This transmission is like just like we took it out, it should be fine. Um, it's outside for like six months. But well, we were just doing no, we were doing corrosion testing, yes, on our parts. That was what we were doing, it didn't just sit out there unintentionally, yeah. So we uh, used to have a solid hub adapter. Probably you'll see, see one of our. I'm really, I just realized I'm standing out here with this knife flinging it around. It's kind of weird. You're also like out of breath, like you just like attack someone with your knife. So out of shape, yeah. Anyway, we used to run a solid hub on the uh, on the engine, like a flywheel adapter, but we've seen like a lot of clutch basket failures um, on race cars with a, uh, especially like four cylinders and six cylinders with the solid hubs. So we got one of the new, the sprung hubs that we sell now from Adamat from the online store. Um, we have a bunch in stock for all sorts of different engines like LS, um, 8HP transmissions, RB engines, 2JZ engines, the K-series engines. We have lots of different adapters. But this one's for the M50. It's essentially like a little unboxing video here. Um, it's like a spacer plate between the engine and transmission and a sprung hub flywheel. So this is how to come to you. Comes with the hardware. Flywheel bolts. Get down here in the action. Yeah, it's like Christmas. You have the billet uh, spacer plate. Um, there's no need to use the printed metal dust shield anymore. These are like dust shield covers, so you're good to go there. And then probably the most important part is the sprung hub flywheel. Just tight it. The packaging is getting the best of Mike. Oh, man. That's not the lightest thing to pick up with the fingers. <laughs> I see so the floor. Shuffle my badass in here. All right, so this is the sprung hub flywheel. It allows the uh, transmission to have some sort of free motion away from the crankshaft. This makes the clutch baskets much happier. So this one's rated to 1,400 newton meter, but we have a, a bunch of different bunch of different versions, different spring thicknesses, depending on how uh, much power you make. For this engine, we're gonna abuse it as much as we can, so I went for the stiffest option. Um, you'll notice the paint here. These are all balanced as an assembly, so use the paint to align it up. So if you undo it for whatever reason. Well, but... you have to undo it to put it on, so. Oh, yeah. you're learning something new every day. So I guess first thing, grab the build adapter. Uh, Make sure you have your dowels in. I often like they always just fall out of me that I don't realize till it's too late. Then I have to like run to the dealership or something to get dowels at the last second. It's kind of an awkward height for both of us. We're like half on the ground, half off the ground, like. All right, cut that and go to this one. Bing bong. Just tap it on there. I think one of my alignment, I think one of my alignment dowels is a little tweaked. So, um, that's pretty sweet. As you can see, this billet piece here covers up the uh, 
where the dust shield would be on the OEM um, cover. So this thing is like all in one. So you don't have the little dust shield like falling out. Also with this kit, there's no need to um, weld anything to the transmission. There's just no need because this is where the stoker mounts now, like OEM. So uh, I guess I'll go ahead and get the flywheel piece removed, the sprung hub, and then get the flywheel on and torqued. All right, we got a table because we're old and our backs hurt. So these shoulder bolts are pretty cool because the shoulder goes into the flywheel so that none of the force is taken by the threads. It's all just taken on the shaft. Here's what the flywheel looks like. Um, looks like a flywheel. Yeah, it looks pretty standard. Just line up the dowels as always. Want this good old rubber mallet. Yeah, let's get your little tap on here. Little tap, tap, tap a -roo. Shooter McGavin. Like that. So now we grab the uh, included crank bolts. Torque, torque, torque rear. So I get to be on this side holding the crank. I get to be on that side tightening the crank. Yeah. So do we know what torque we want to go to yet? Yeah, I think we do the 120. I think you need a breaker bar. Well, you do it and let me see what happens. What was that? That was it. Okay like trying to hold the motor too. sprung adapter um, is basically a buffer between the engine and transmission that helps protect the clutch baskets. Uh, and this is an automatic solution to the clutch ba basket braking problem. It's pretty sweet. It's the biggest sprung hub you can get and it's like, in my opinion, most like OEM. And it usually uses a billet um, aluminum flywheel to go with it with the steel starter ring. And it includes all the hardware and everything you need. Um, so right now I guess we can lower the engine a bit and kind of link up the, the motor with the transmission. and. Uh, I mean, one step closer to getting it in the car. Let's do it. Ding, ding. A new place, a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Nothing too 
Hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. I know man, passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. So here we have the Atomat adapter and the starter in place. The starter takes one bolt in from the back and one bolt in from the front, just like OEM. So like... So it's OEM. I mean, it's pretty sweet. So there's no more drilling or welding on the case anymore. Um, I just torqued everything down. I did like 100, 100 foot pounds on the M12s. And uh, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty excited to get this thing back in the car. Are we wheeling it over right now? I think we should. All right, look at how prepped the car is. It is Stance Nation right now. We're just on the ground. No tires? Uh-oh, Mike broke something. What'd you break? What is it? What is it? It's a pressure transducer for somewhere. Uh, I don't. Soaked in coolant. Unless you just keep connector caps on the floor. <laughs> it looks like a like a low dollar one. Yeah, it's one of those things with a brass one. I don't know where it's from. But I don't have any in the in the engine right now. Do you have one in the trans? What's this? Oh, it's just a. It's not female slide. Yeah. Maybe it just came out of pieces. Weird. My fuel pressure sensor was 200. I think. They're ripping me hard, dog. Yeah. Give the angle of the dangle. Don't get it too high, because... Yeah, we do have to go try. over it. You're just I'm making... I'm going to the car up for a second. Because we have to do a couple things first. Ah, oh, yeah, dude, I mean, you just told me to I stance guess, it I out. Guess, I guess, uh, cut till the next, next episode. We left you with a teaser.